I am going to talk about how to harmonize data when somebody has data collected from multiple places and might show some scanner effects. So, first of all, why would you have data coming from multiple places? It happens because of the reproducibility crisis. This is a paper that most of psychology should know, even if we don't have so many psychologists today. Uh, they replicated 100 uh, typical findings that were significant in the literature. They tried to replicate it with high power designs and they found that they couldn't replicate not even half of the findings, but only 36% uh, only uh, of them. Um, and this is a neuroimaging meta-analysis showing no effects for clinical depression or uh, emotional or cognitive tasks in uh, 199 studies. And this is the distribution of the results of previous meta-analysis in depression, which all claim to have found uh, different locations in the brain where you can find statistically uh, coherent uh, results across studies for uh, upper is emotional processing, so emotional tasks like face images, and lower is for cognitive tasks such as attention memory. And what we can see here is that there is not much overlap between what this meta-analysis found before. And a reason for that might be the fact that many meta-analyses include uh, studies that uh, don't have a lot of power. Here it shows that most of the um, studies including meta-analyses have uh, a power of 0 to 10 percent, which can of course bias the results even in a meta-analysis. Um, so the lower the statistical power, the higher the bias for the research finding, findings. This is a study where I work with Jamal, uh, which had many teams analyzing the same data set, which was not underpowered, it was actually more than 300 participants performing a gambling task. And uh, we had many teams analyze them, and every team had the freedom to choose how to test a predefined number of hypotheses, which is H1 to 9. And these are the clustering results of the t statistical maps for the first hypothesis across teams. And what it shows is that most of the teams could arrive to uh, strongly correlated statistical maps, but then there, were, there was another cluster of teams who could not, were uh, having different results compared to the big cluster. And many of these had wrong um, design matrices for the t-test to test the hypothesis. And uh, in this table, in red, we have teams who uh, did, had uh, insignificant results for each of the nine hypotheses. And in green is when they reported a significant effect. And we can see that, except for hypothesis five, maybe, there's not much coherence across the teams. And this is the exact same data being analyzed from them. So we would expect a bit more um, more consistency. So, how can you address these problems? Um, because it can be expensive for one lab to collect a lot of data, you can arrange a consortium study before data collection and collect it in multiple cities, places, with multiple scanners, multiple setups, as they have it prepared in their labs. Or you can get data sets that were already collected and merge them, provided that they are similar in some way, for example, the study population. However, this approach induces between scanner variability, which can be visible on the data and can induce biases. Um, because network analyses are uh, quite popular, especially in clinical sciences, uh, we might think, how would you harmonize data in, for, for the purpose of global network uh, topology analysis. So we know that a uh, typical pipeline for constructive uh, DTI connectome 
uh, starts from doing the tactography and um, based on a uh, given parcellation, construct the connectivity matrix. In this case, we have fractional and isotropy values, and then calculate uh, global parameters based on either weighted or binary version of this connectivity matrix. So for data to be harmonized, you have two options if you wanted to test the hypothesis for a given global parameter. One is harmonizing each weight of the connectivity matrix, and the other one is harmonizing um, the global parameters once they were already calculated. So given that uh, there can be variability depending on which methods you choose, which we previously know from, from research, uh, you might wonder if there is a difference between these two. And one reason that it's important to do this is because many studies do weight-based analysis, weight -based analysis and then do also global network analysis. So would you need to harmonize twice in that case? And even if you do only global network analysis, still, I don't know, uh, in the lab I worked on this data set, somebody uh, from the assistant professor said we should do matrix harmonization, but I was not agreeing with that. I wanted uh, parameter harmonization because uh, global parameters are the last ones to enter the analysis. So. I think the harmonization should be done on the finer features rather than previous in the pipeline. So I went. I wanted to see if I'm right or if the other professor is right. Um, so compact harmonization is one of the most popular ar algorithms that is being used for uh, neuroimaging data, and this is the first study that introduces it in neuroimaging. The algorithm originally comes from <coughs> genetics. And um, one interesting thing about this is this element here, which allows you to insert some variables that you know are biologically relevant. And you want to preserve that variability. So this can be gender, age, or some clinical group, if you compare groups. And this is variability that is not going to be touched during harmonization. It's not going to be altered. Otherwise, it's just a mixed effects model, and it adds site as a random effect for uh, removing it. Uh, ah, yeah. Here it's comparing um, a lot of methods for multi-site harmonization. And COMBAT performed the best together with uh, SVA. And yeah, these were also commonly used in previous studies, but they are not very efficient because it should be around zero for all of the data points. And uh, an interesting thing they showed is that um, combat harmonization on fractional isotropy values could preserve the true effect of age in a multi-site study. And uh, this was not true for any of the other measurements, for any of the other um, methods for, for multi-site harmonization. So this makes it promising because it's a way to demonstrate that biological variability associated with age can be not affected by, by the statistical procedure. So we tested uh, uh, combat harmonization for network analysis in a large study of TBI with data collected at emergency departments in Canada uh, in most of the major cities in Canada. And uh, the DTI data was QC'd by excluding volumes that were showing motion artifact uh, manually, but also we tested whether we could do it automatically using um, uh, root mean square displacement from MRI tricks and uh, RMS from MRI tricks was able to detect almost as accurate as humans the uh, unusable volumes based on motion artifact. So it could be used, for example, most of those that had RMS higher than 0.64 were judged by a human as being unusable. 
So we can look at uh, four of the most common global parameters uh, in two ways. First of all would be harmonizing the um, connectivity weights from the matrix by extracting the lower diagonal elements and constructing a participant by connection matrix. And then harmonizing this matrix and reconstructing it back in connectivity matrices. And the other one is just applying harmonization after that the global parameters were already obtained. And here is just a snippet showing how easy it is to do it. And the library is called NeuroCombat. And this mod thing is where you define which uh, variables you want to be uh, not altered by the algorithm. And you can define them in the model so uh, it preserves the variability, biological variability. And here the upper row shows each global parameter before harmonization and how it was distributed across sites. And they are visible side effects which are all significant with one-way ANOVAs. And uh, the middle line shows the efficiency of harmonizing connectivity matrices, each connectivity weight, and then computing global, param uh, global parameters based on the harmonized connectivity weight. And these had uh, okay results for efficiency, but uh, was not very efficient <coughs> for the other parameters. And the last uh, approach, which was harmonizing the global parameters once they were obtained based on unharmonized matrices, uh, removed all side effects with no significant uh, one-way ANOVA effect of site. Uh, in the second step, uh, I looked at the intra-class correlation within each site um, to see how coherent the data is before and after harmonization for each approach. So here is just showing the t-values in the lower diagonal before harmonization, the difference, pairwise difference between sites. And here is showing, because this is after harmonization, uh, intra-class correlation between data before harmonization, data after harmonization. And what we can see is that usually the intra-class correlation coefficients are quite high for both, except for clustering coefficient, but they are higher for parameter harmonization, suggesting that the original within set variability is preserved better when uh, harmonizing parameters and not matrices. This approach is also very commonly used in uh, psychology, but also in neuroimaging more recently for testing how reliable data is. For example, connectome in fMRI is not very reliable. <laughs> and in psychology, it's been used for a lot of time for, and it's being used for quantifying how reliable a questioner can be. And this is showing the correlations with age before and after harmonization. And it's interesting because you can see the separation uh, of sides in the plots before harmonizing, which uh, completely goes away after harmonizing. But also, the relationships with, relationships with age are higher following uh, parameter harmonization rather than matrix harmonization. So it seems that even when you look at the relationship with age, um, we have side effects still remaining in the data when only harmonizing the connectivity weights. So uh, combat can be useful for, for <coughs> the harmonization of networks, but if you do uh, weight-based analysis, then you just harmonize the weights. If you do global parameters, you harmonize the parameters. Um, and yes, this bit 